Whoop whoop, Care Collab time. Hi everyone. I get to join in on Dendrobium Kingianum Care Collab. Thank you so much, Fernanda Nascimento, for adding me to your list and for coordinating this care collab. And thank you so much for giving me these keikis. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today doing my video. And another quick disclaimer, my keikis are very dusty, my pot looks very dirty, and that is because I don't want to move them around too much. The key word being keikis, they haven't quite settled into their pot just yet, and until they do, they shall be accumulating dust, and I hope that you don't mind either way. So I am here in southern Spain. They normally come from the east coast of Australia, but I do have an offspring of this species, Dendrobium barioda. So I'm a little bit familiar already with how to care for Dendrobium barioda because I've had that one for a very, very long time. But a species can always be a little bit of a different ball game. However, the parentage and the habitat out of the way. Let me just put one thing out there. <laughs> right now it is called Dendrobium kingianum. Maybe one day it's going to be called Thelichaiton. Oh boy, they haven't quite decided yet. <laughs> but if Dendrobium kingianum changes to Thelichaiton, then Dendrobium berryoda will probably change as well. For the time being, we'll reference it as Dendrobium kingianum until such a time that they tell us otherwise. I've had my little keikis since last year, probably about six months, and they came to me while we were heading into winter. These Australian dendrobiums are super, super tough little cookies, and I have not been babying my keikis one bit. I've put them through their paces this winter. Normally, when it comes to keikis that are detached from the mother plant, I am very cautious. I consider them seedlings, and I treat them as such. Not with this little gaggle in the pot here. From the moment they arrived and I potted them up, I put them into my south-facing covered portico on a shelf where I let the angle of the sun do the light requirements for me. So once they were somewhat settled into their new home, the angle of the sun dropped lower in the sky and penetrated their little shelf more than it will in the summer when it is much, much higher in the sky. So their acclimating process was you're here, welcome. This is what you're gonna get. Let's get you toughened up and let's put your reputation as being tough little dendrobiums to the test. Here we are, they're still all alive. And as you can see, I have a little bud opening. So gee, I just about missed the mark getting a blooming one into the viewfinder. In their first few months with me, they've already tolerated temperatures down to eight degrees Celsius. We have yet to see how they will fare in the summer where I can get temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius. My climate is also extremely, extremely dry, which brings me to my setup. They are mainly lithophytes. Very rarely can they be found as epiphytes in their natural habitat. So it was a match made in heaven, in my opinion, when I got them because I prefer to grow in lecker and self-watering. Ideally, these little guys would prefer a shallower pot, but that is when they are maturer. Seeing as they're cakeys and they're babies, they need a lot more humidity around their leaves so that they don't desiccate because the root system is not exactly established yet. In order to keep them stable in their pot, I made a little daisy chain of all of them with a wire connecting all of them in like a crescent and used the extended length of the wire as my stakes. That has secured them somewhat, but not to the point of cleaning leaves. I don't want to push it. <laughs> now, I already had a little bloom come for me previously, which I couldn't document because it didn't fully open. But it did last for about three weeks and I did let it bloom out. I didn't nip it in the bud prematurely. Like I said, I'm putting these guys through their paces. I have the luxury to do so because I have several in there. If any one of them were to collapse, I still have plan B in pedo and then I'll know to back off a little bit and not be so hard on these little guys. But there's another little bloom coming right here. Also not quite open, very, very difficult to show. These blooms don't get very big. Now on mature plants, they might get to about two centimeters maybe three, yeah, that's pushing it, but they are usually around two centimeters and a little bit less, so not very big blooms. And I can't tell you about the fragrance of the Kingianum because, well, you can see, if I put my big nose in there, I'm probably gonna knock them all over, like in a domino effect. <laughs> 
But if there's anything that this parent for Dendrobium berryoda would contribute to the cross of berryoda, then I'm hoping that one day there will be a resemblance of that honeysuckle fragrance that I get from the berryoda. Now these being cakeys and heading into winter, lower temperatures, etc. all I've been doing is flushing them regularly, just so that there is nothing stagnant in that pot that I can keep the oxygen exchange going. I don't want to rot out any viable roots that they came with, so I've been very conservative on doing that. But it is better to give them the occasional flush than to let them dry out completely, because once again, they're babies. In future, of course, my setup is going to be, they will never Never be completely dry but my climate is so so dry in its ambient air I have such low humidity that at least this setup will help me out a little bit so that the little microclimate in the pot provides a little bit more humidity than anything my climate could do so when it comes to quirks on these little guys I believe there are some that are worthy of mentioning I obviously I'm going to have some form of a pink and white one but there are so many variations and clonal differences because of the wide range of habitat that flowers can vary from pure white to a purple red with a very attractive and equally varied lip. The markings can be in the form of spots and stripes. I wonder if my little bloom is gonna open up so I can see more of it. This is how far my first little bloom got. But the other quirk about this orchid to take note of is the fact that it can be a cakey machine. Now, that can be a blessing or a curse, depending on which side of the fence you're standing on. Personally, I love cakeys. Clearly, because I got me some, and if Fernanda's orchid didn't produce so many cakeys, who knows if I would be in this care collab today. So I'm a big fan of cakeys. I'm not disappointed in them at all. But of course, cakeys would then mean less blooms, especially in a species. But here's the one quirk that I have taken mental note of when it comes to my little cakeys maturing in the future, is that they produce cakeys in cultivation more often because of over-fertilizing in the winter months and over-watering at all times. So there we have it, my setup is Lekka and self-watering and I'm hearing over-watering at all times and I'm thinking, okay, we shall see what happens. Clearly, there won't be any fertilizer, but what effect will the over-watering have on whether my little cakeys will become cakey machines as opposed to blooming machines? Only time will tell. But if you're considering or are already growing a Dendrobium kingianum and you're only getting cakeys, maybe one of these two factors in the quirks of this orchid is something that you can tweak and reduce so that next time around you get more blooms. It's just a thought. I'm going to be very interested to see all the videos on Dendrobium kingianum in their different setups and their different climate and who grows them and how. And the links are in the description, making access to those videos very, very easy. And as I was mentioning that, you know, I'm interested to see how others grow theirs and you happen to be growing Dendrobium kingianum and are also making videos and are not part of this care collab, please go to Fernanda's video and leave a comment and express your interest that you would like to be included when this orchid is featured once again in the care collab series. Now you can imagine my excitement and my anticipation when we now are heading into spring, what these little cakeys are going to do next. New growths would be nice, which would give me a new root system. But I find it all very exciting anyway. The origin of this orchid being Eastern Australia, for me, it is Portugal. <laughs> and here it is now in Southern Spain. One could say there's not much to see in this video, but ooh, if you look beyond the cakeys and see the potential, I am well excited. So thank you very much for this orchid, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. Thank you for making me aware that there's a care collab and that I can join in. And thank you to everybody that has watched this video. Your time is very much appreciated. I hope that it was helpful in some way or the other. Have yourselves a beautiful day, please, on one condition that you stay safe. I would love to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.